Welcome back to Getting Started with Figma. In our previous videos, we created components and styles, published them to our team library, designed a mobile website with our team, and built a prototype. With our prototype created and our design complete, we're ready to hand them off to our development team to be built. To invite our developer to our file, we can click the blue share button and enter their email address or copy the link and send it to them. Frequently, developers won't need the ability to edit designs, which means that we can invite them to the file with can view permissions. But if we do want our developers to have edit permissions, we should be sure to change it here. Let's have a look at the file from the developer's point of view. Figma looks a bit different when you're a viewer who only has can view permission. Many of the tabs, tools, and functions that we've used in our earlier videos to edit our file are now unavailable. They're hidden so a viewer can easily find what they need without needing to navigate through the full interface. When nothing is selected, the right side panel will display all of the local styles within the file, as well as any document-wide export settings. The left side panel still displays all of the pages in the file and the full layer structure. We have the ability to expand and navigate through the layer hierarchy here, but we aren't able to reorder, rename layers, or edit anything here. When we select different layers in the layers panel or directly on the canvas, the right side panel changes to display the CSS code for the selection. We can toggle the view between CSS, iOS Swift code, and Android code. This code isn't intended to be directly copied and pasted to build your application, but it can be used as a helpful reference as we start turning our designs into code. When we select a text layer, helpful information such as the font family, weight, size, and line height are displayed. We can also see the color property of the text layer here. If you're using a text or color style, the name of the style will be displayed as commented code above the properties. We can also use export settings to export high fidelity assets from Figma to use in our final product. If there isn't an existing export setting available, we can create one by clicking the plus icon. The distance between elements and their position within their frames are important pieces of information which we can get through red lines. When we select a layer on the canvas, we can hover our mouse over other layers and Figma will display the red line distances directly on the canvas. Viewers also have access to comment mode to communicate with the project team directly within Figma. With comment mode, you can pin a comment directly to a frame to comment within the context of the design. All of the features we've shown are great when building a copy of your designs in production code, but when you need to understand the user flow and interactions, you'll probably want to view the prototype in presentation view. Now we can better understand how different scrolling containers behave, what transitions are used when navigating through frames, and more. Throughout this Getting Started series, we started by signing up for a free account. And after creating a prototype from our design that was built with components and styles, we've now handed it off to be developed. Being able to use Figma as a complete end-to-end -end product design tool makes it an excellent choice for your whole team. This series has only been a high-level look at what an end-to-end -end design process could look like when using Figma. But of course, we skipped over a lot of finer details. If you want a more in-depth look at some of the features demonstrated throughout this series, be sure to check the links in the video description. If you ever encounter an issue, you can also reach our support team by clicking the question mark in the bottom right corner in Figma. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching and happy designing.